Scott Wingo, CEO of Channel Advisor. Uh, Channel Advisor is a software company uh, based out of the states in North Carolina. Uh, we have an office in Melbourne that, that is growing very rapidly. And what we do at Channel Advisor is we help retailers sell online through what we call e-commerce channels. And there's three that we really think about. There's search like Google, Bing, and Yahoo, comparison shopping engines, uh, and then marketplaces like eBay and Amazon. Uh, then we also have a rich media offering that a lot of retailers use, especially in the cate apparel category, to help them sell their apparel products because it makes them the, gives the consumer the ability to go and zoom in and change colors and really get a feel for what that does. Yeah, the, the thing that's really interesting is the e-commerce space. If you think about all of .com, uh, the e-commerce space has actually kind of thrived and grown throughout the years. Um, it's come down a little bit, so the recession is actually probably the really first speed bump that e-commerce has had. Uh, here in the states, so uh, e-commerce has been growing in the 20 to 30 percent from kind of 01 to 0, 07, mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of declined to a little bit negative uh, to flat in, in 08 due to the recession. 2009 kind of came back up to 10 percent growth, and 2010 we're looking at kind of high teens, so 18 yep. percent growth. We're, we're optimistic that this holiday we'll see growth up, up as high as 20 percent. So things are definitely coming back. That secular trend of more and more consumers shopping online. Uh, and I think ultimately the recession uh, will, will help e-commerce because there's fewer retail stores here in the States that have kind of survived. So, um, for example, electronics, a lot of the large electronic retailers went out of business. So there's really only one called Best Buy that you have a choice at. So your, your natural other choice is going to be all the online vendors available. Right. And then, you know, a lot of innovation in e-commerce is helping consumers adopt e-commerce at a faster rate. So you have things like uh, Amazon has a program called Prime where for $80 you can get free two-day shipping. So that, that takes kind of the shipping and handling cost out of the equation. Um, and then you also have uh, mobile and the convenience of the mobile devices making it very easy for you to be in a store, scan a barcode, and, and come compare prices online very quickly and say, you know, I better not buy this thing in the store because I can get it 10% off if I order it online. In the U.S., what's happening is eBay is kind of flat, and even globally, uh, even in Australia, um, eBay has kind of hit some rough patches, and it's been kind of flat to down for the last two or three years. And Amazon has taken advantage of that to grow very, very quickly. Um, Amazon has a program called um, their seller business or third party. It's doing very well. It's growing at, at for us, it's growing at about 70% year over year um, uh, versus kind of eBay being flat. So taking share at a, a really good clip. Um, the, that's an interesting trend. Um, we'd love to see Amazon come into the Australia market. They're not there right now, but that's they have announced they're opening uh, 15 more distribution centers. So you know that's optimistic that maybe one of those will be in Australia. We'll have to kind of wait and see. Yeah, there's there's kind of two generations of comparison shopping engines. The first generation, uh, they all kind of are vintage mid 2000s or earlier. Um, they tend to buy their traffic from from search engines, uh, and then they charge retailers on a cost per click basis. Um, there's a new generation of comparison shopping engine, things like the Find and ShopWiki that have grown up, and um, they have a different angle on things. They either have a much broader selection or content around product reviews that are getting uh, consumers to go to them for the content so they don't have to pay for the, the consumers. Um, it, it's a little bit of a better mousetrap business model that they have. So, so what we do is we make the retailer's life easier. Yeah, if you have 10,000 products and you want to be on, let's say, two search engines, three comparison shopping engines, and uh, an eBay or an Amazon, that's a daunting task because you're going to have to deal with you know, at least 10,000 keywords on, this, on the search engines times two, so that's 20,000. If you want to do three comparison shopping engines, that's another 30,000 things you're dealing with. Uh, and then the marketplace is just to increase the complexity. So what our software does is it allows the retailer, we manage all that for the retailer. So they, they get out of the day-to-day -day firefighting of getting data feeds out and dealing with orders and that kind of thing. And they can really look at the strategic view of what's going on on these channels. So from one central software dashboard that's hosted online so they can get to it anywhere in the, in the world, um, they're able to manage their these e-commerce channels uh, in a very simple way. And the base functionality is just getting your products out there and doing things that are smart, like if you're out of a product, don't have it advertised, things like that. If your prices change, if your images change, make sure all that's reflected. If you're running any specials, make sure that's reflected as well. All the way up to the very top, um, providing cross-channel analytics that say, if I had an incremental dollar, where should I spend it? Which of these channels is driving the most sales for me? Which is driving the most margin? So by managing all that in one place, you're able to answer those really strategic questions versus kind of having, if you do it yourself, you get really bogged down in the details. I would say what we've learned is the consumer behavior is such that um, when e-commerce was very young, most of the consumers would just go direct to the retailers. So a lot of retailers get used to that kind of that free traffic per se.
Um, then what's happened is, is you look at kind of 2010, 2011, um, that, that direct traffic that we call it is about 10% of the business. 90% is uh, these e-commerce channels. Search has about 40% share, comparison shopping 15, and marketplace is 25. So what's happened um, is the laggards in over that time have, have kind of fought that trend and, and the, the leaders have adopted that trend. So we've seen a lot of entrepreneurial e-commerce companies come and say, you know, we may have a brand, we don't have stores, but we don't have this kind of known brand out there, but we're going to be number one in search and comparison shopping in marketplaces because that's where consumers are going to be. Uh, and I would kind of give that, it, it's kind of neat to, uh, one of the reasons we love to be international is you can kind of take those learnings of markets that are a little bit ahead and, and it's almost like a time machine and you can kind of go back in that time machine and go into Australia and say, here's how we think things are going to develop and here's how I would recommend you get in front of that. And, and being really aggressive with these channels is very important. Every every channel has its own strategies. Um, here in the States, there's a lot of buzz around social networking, so Facebook and Twitter and how uh, you know the activity is very high on those, not a lot of that activity is around e-commerce. So a lot of people are experimenting. It's too early to call on that, so um, we actually kind of recommend retailers experiment, but not expect it to be a big growth driver. The same is true for mobile, where you're, you're seeing a lot of excitement around mobile, uh, and a lot of retailers are wondering how they play that. Should they have a mobile application? Should they make their site mobile friendly? Um, the thing that we're seeing that's working really well is a lot of the comparison shopping engines are mobile now, and they have a barcode scanner. Um, so ones that we see here are Red Laser, Shop Savvy, and Google Android has one built in called Google Shopper. Um, consumers are actually using that those those pretty reliably, and, and a lot of traffic is coming through those. Mm. So that's a strategy we recommend for, for retailers to look at. Uh, I'd say that there's kind of retailers are looking at things in, in two buckets. They're kind of trying to think of long range, what's going to drive growth, and that's where social and mobile are interesting that we talked about. Um, and then short range, they're thinking about, you know, what, we, we spent a lot of time during the recession making our site really robust and convert. Now what are some other things we can do? So a lot of retailers are looking at consolidating vendors and um, what can they do through their search programs that they're already doing, their comparison shopping, and, and what new marketplaces can they get into to reach a whole new set of consumers.